Very excited to talk to this man. Been a fixture on the MMA scene for quite some time. We saw him at Madison Square Garden earlier this month with his new prize pupil, Edmund Shabazian, one of the rising stars in the sport right now, continues to impress each and every time he fights. He is undefeated and just beat Brad Tavares. We're talking now to his head coach, the great Edmund Tarverdian of Glendale Fighting Club, joins us right now. It's been a while since we had the, uh, the opportunity to talk to Edmund, and I appreciate him coming on very much. Edmund, how are you? Good, my friend. How are you? I'm doing really great. It's great to talk to you. Thank you for doing this. So to see a guy like Edmund Shabazian, a guy that you've known since you know his, his early days as a teenager, to see him turn into this, has this exceeded your expectations? Did you expect him to turn out to be such a great pro? Well, no, we expected it. You know, he's always been doing good in the gym and sparring and competing at high-level competition. And um, but, you know, I'm not going to be arrogant and say, yeah, you, you know, we're going to expect uh, exactly this and all that stuff. But um, he, he looks great in the gym. He trains very hard. And, you know, we had the high hopes. And him performing like that really uh, put, put it out there so we could believe in it more. You know, we did believe in it. But competing at that stage, at that level, at that age was a tremendous accomplishment. And he did exactly what he was supposed to do. How old was he when you first met him? Um, 10 years old. Wow. 10 Starting younger than I thought. And, and how did yeah. you meet him? Well, he came with his brother. He was a little chubby kid that wanted to do some martial arts and he came into our karate programs that we have for the youth. We start from 4 PM after school programs. And he started with that. Then we transitioned into him into our grappling programs, boxing and started competing, you know, but he had, um, good karate background we got a black belt in karate so that's why he could kick and punch you know but then when we put him in deep competition and amateur boxing programs and you know a lot of wrestling in high school and he basically did mma in, in, in our gym he came here to become an mma fighter yeah he's part of that new generation that doesn't come from one specific discipline but is just a complete mma fighter at, at what age do you start talking to him like hey you're really good maybe we should start thinking about this being a career when does that happen uh, when he was 13 years old, when he Whoa. was 13, we started, um, We there's actually, I went on YouTube and I saw a video, um, somebody upload of him that we don't even have that, that fight of his, he's 13 years old competing uh, up against, uh, it's a smoker fight, which is a gym competition for Muay Thai kickboxing, which is nowadays not allowed, so they don't give a winner and a loser, basically, it's just like a sparring session. But it's actual, you know, it's good for a young at that age to compete. And he was competing against a 25 year old and you know, he, he wins the fight. He does great. You could see me in the corner, and I, I looked at that. He's only 13 years old going up against a 25-year-old. So a kid at that age that could uh, fight at that level and um, fight adults and, you know, and do what he's supposed to do and listen to everything we tell him in the corner. I, w I was watching it the other day, and I was like, man, this is awesome. And people are starting to recognize him and putting videos out there. But at 13, I knew this, this kid has, you know, he has the mental discipline. He has the mental toughness. The work ethics are there. He listens when you speak, so he's a, he's a great kid, you know, honored student. Um, every everything is to be a, a champion. And his parents were okay with him fighting that early, that young. <laughs> oh, they love it. His parents love it, and his dad actually knew my dad for a long time. But his dad, you know, his parents keep it very professional. They've been in my gym probably maybe two, three times, only watching Edmund. So they trust us um, a million percent. They come to the fights, of course, but they let us do what we're supposed to do, and the belief is there. They, I, I look at it and like as my own kid, and father wants me to do that, and we, we made an agreement that that's what we're exactly going to do. Uh, I met him for the first time prior to this last fight in uh, in New York City, and he, he just has like such a, a, a smile. He seems to be a very happy-go-lucky kid, always in a good mood. Does anything bother him? Does anything rattle him? Does he get you know phased by any of this, or is he always that way? That way. He's always smiling, so, you know, we wanted to name his nickname Mr. Smiley or something like that, but, you know, he has a gold heart, so we call him the golden boy, but he's always like that, very positive kid, a good energy, always ready to go when he gets in here, you know, he's a good kid outside, you know, with friends, everybody, and he treats everybody very nicely, he's, he's just the way he is. Now, the fun part about his story is now you can go back and, and look at some of the uh, the footage of Ronda training at your gym, and he's in the background. He's a part of it. He saw the entire you know rise, and he saw how big of a star. He, he got a, a you know front row seat to all of that. Do you think that has helped him at all? Like, Were you talking to him? Were you trying to show him 
what was going on as it was going on. I know you were so focused on Rhonda, but you had other fighters as well. Do you feel like living that experience, everything that she went through, will now help him as he tries to make that same rise? Um, yes, it has helped him a lot. I mean, he's seen that hands-on and with Rhonda, all the, a few of the open workouts and a few of the camps, you know, he was helping out and he came and he saw all that, um, the, all the pressure that Rhonda dealt with so greatly and i think every every little thing in the gym that he saw he picked up but of course what she did was huge and i think it's a big confidence booster and you know he's seen it he's worked in the corner with me with uh, travis's fights also and um you know so i put him in in places that he could get a feel of exactly what he's gonna see in the future so we've done that i think the guidance has been great not only on behalf of me on behalf of all our training um uh, uh, coaches are training camp and everybody's been doing a great job with this kid and putting in a lot of time and everybody has helped besides all the athletes in the gym. I, I know this is about Edmund, but for you personally to have, you know, a, a new star pupil, a guy who seems to be a real legit superstar, potential champion, if you will, the first one maybe since Ronda Rousey, a, a homegrown talent, if you will. Is there a part of you that's like, you know, for everyone that that doubted you, for everyone that hated on you after her fall, this is kind of a way of, of shutting them up. Is there any part of it? I know, I know you're trying to make this about him and you want to be humble about it, but, but for you personally, I know you took some of that stuff, you know, to heart. Is there a part of you that's like, I'm going to show you what I can do. I'm going to show you the kind of coach that I can be. Uh, definitely. Every, everything is a motivation, you know? So I, I think the people that, you know, have doubted me and all, all our work in the gym and, you know, it's not only Ronda, we've had boxing champions in the gym, kickboxing world champions. So, you know, when I look at it, I'm like, Hey, this is how it's going to be. Of course, Ronda's was so huge and all that doubt. It, it's, a, it was a motivation to me. And now it's, it's a big motivation for me to show the whole world what I could do with Edmund and, you know, bringing in fighters every time I bring in special unique uh, champions. And that's what it's all about is having champions that are great, that um, leave a legacy that, you know, people could learn from and people could look and it's, it's history that is going to be made. And, you know, I'm doing that with a young 21 year old that performs at this level. And now people are starting to recognize and, you know, realize that, that Hey, life, it, it goes up and down and, you know, at times you have to fall down so you could, understand what you're doing and even work harder and you know they do motivate me so i'm not i'm not upset at any of the hate or whatever has happened or all the criticism it's part of life and I've, i'm just i'm learning as i go and it, it's it's life man it happens ariel so but i'm i'm happy and excited that i could be at in this position again and i thank the lord for that You've kept a relatively low profile, you know, since since Ronda left the sport. Initially, like you're saying that now, but initially, did you have a different feeling towards the criticism? Did you feel like you were unfairly, you know, ridiculed, critiqued, uh, mocked by the sport? And did you feel like you needed some time away from everything, from the limelight? No, actually, I didn't get time away or anything. I just, you know, it was out there. Uh, the, like last time we spoke, the disappointing part a little bit was more coming from people that should understand more about the sport. Not only the fans, the fans do understand, but the people that actually sweat every day in the gym. And uh, that that a bit, you know, touched my heart, but uh, I didn't take time off. I was back in the gym and all the other fighters were pushing uh, me and everybody was pushing each other in the gym so we could have uh, the more champions and now we're gonna we're on the on the on that path and everybody's working hard in the gym we're gonna we're gonna have more fighters that are from our gym that are gonna be in the ufc soon and you know in big organizations do you still have a relationship with ronda absolutely i spoke to her yesterday oh really how is she doing she's doing great she's happy everything is good <clears throat> she actually knows that i'm gonna be on your show oh <laughs> how does she feel about that She's happy. Everything is good. She says whatever decisions we make, she supports it. So it's the right decision. This is all about Edmund. We have a new fighter, so we're putting everything in the past. Whatever was wrong, right, negative, <clears throat> positive, we're taking all the good only. We're leaving all the other stuff that happened um, behind us so we could support um, up-and-coming uh, great kid that is has the potential of becoming a, a champion in the future. I appreciate that. That means a lot to me. I think I know what you're referring to, so I appreciate that. Um, I'm just curious. No chance she ever fights again, right? I feel like I have to ask the question. No chance, right? Oh, okay, you're asking. No, you know, I'm going to leave all the stuff up to her. She could answer her questions. So 
scenario. I'm not going to say anything. Okay, that is fair. <laughs> did you enjoy her time as a wrestler, though? Did you watch, you know, did you watch like a proud father? Did you like that? Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like what she's doing with her career. Everything is good. <laughs> and my, I took my son and my family actually to watch her uh, wrestle. She's, she's doing great. So she's happy. Really? Okay. Um, I read a story that uh, came out just a couple of days ago with The Athletic where they said that, uh, written by the great Chuck Mindenhall, that you were like crying. You were so emotional in the cage after the fight um, against Brad Tavares earlier this month in, in New York City. Why were you so emotional? Why did you, why did you feel that way after Edmund knocked him out? Again, Edmund is um, like a kid to me. You know, a lot of uh, parents with their children nowadays uh, spend a lot of time. But in, in in living in America, we know that it's school activities, sport activities, this, that. Edmund is uh, like my son, you know. He's been in this gym for so long and so many hours being put in here. You know, I mean, he probably saw me more than he saw his father and uh, mother, you know. He was here after school and he's in school in the morning. He wakes up, parents go to work. He's in here, you know, working every day, day and night you know, hard, hard work and what he did and fought um, a good fighter, great fighter, you know, a tough fighter like Tavares and he performed that way. So it really touched my heart besides just only the physical and mental investment that we've had with Edmund, you know, it's been a lot of uh, everything. It's been like my, uh, it's been like my son, all the financial, everything, you know, I've taken care of so many things like that's of course between me and him, but I've, I've done everything like a parent would do for a child. So, We've been in so many different competitions throughout the, the states, whether it's boxing. I had to put coaches with him, you know, put a big team behind him so he could go and compete when I was busy with Ronda. So we've done so much, and I think he appreciates that so much. And me seeing him perform at that level, it really touched my heart. So I was uh, uh, emotional, and I was so happy for him that he did exactly what we worked on. Uh, whether we, you know, went through what we had to do in the locker room, he came out and did exactly what we worked on and he he looked great doing it so you know the way he kept his uh, he was calm and calculated and the way he performed really put tears in my eyes and it was just um, a joy of happiness it's not you know and we're gonna see more of him um, the way he performs and maybe next one I, I will be more um, so much more <laughs> relaxed and more tears I'll just you know know that he could do it but that big step up fighting people in the UFC fighters in the top 10 at that age it's not a joke, Ariel, and we know it's tough competition, and what he did was amazing, so it made me really happy. Has that ever happened to you before, where you, where you were, you know, openly crying like that, of joy, in a in a, in a a cage, in a ring yeah. after a fight? Um, not in a cage, with Ronda's uh, performances, I've been a bit emotional at times, not in that way, you know, I've had a boxing match that we, we got dropped uh, for the WBC title, one of my fighters, and we got dropped in the first round, and the way I spoke to him, and he came back in the sixth and stopped the fight at the Staples, we fought in there, the um, Chavez Jr. undercard when he fought for the world title, so we are the co-main event on that, and you know, he, he put tears in my eyes too, you know, my fighter, Ronis. And we, we, we've had, I've had moments like that. You know, I think it's that the whole camp and how we worked. And, you know, before this camp, we had a little, um, before this fight with the Forest fight, Edmund had a few, we went through a few little injuries. And he, at 21 years old, he took it so well. And, you know, I don't even want to talk about stuff like that. But the kid was, he, he was like, coach, I'm going to fight no matter what. And he, coming out and performing like that, it's just, amazing you know <clears throat> he's got heart heart of a lion that's why we call him the golden boy he's got the heart as well is he the youngest person that you've you've been with like from 10 years old now to being a pro have you taken anyone from that young of an age to this point or is he the first yes the first that we started uh, uh from 10 years old that wow at this level yeah that's unbelievable. And and to the best of my knowledge, Ronda is so Ronda is his manager. Is like is she actually negotiating his fights and his contracts and things like that, or is it a whole team of people, including you? Um, it's including me. Me and uh, Ronda do it together. But we've been uh, working with Dana, and he's been great. And you know, me and her uh, deal with the situation, and uh, we're both in the in the loop with Dana in in conversation, and so we do it together. You know, I've I've done her career and. Um, she respects that, so both of us together, I think, have um, enough knowledge to guide this kid into into the championships and make sure that after uh, his career, he will be happy and he can enjoy his life. Is it is this the the only fighter that you guys do this with, or do you have a, a group of fighters now? 
so we have a group of fighters. All the guys that come out, basically from Mike, Jimmy, and her, have an agreement that we should, you know, work together and help these kids grow. Her name, her experience, everything is um, helpful. And her even talking to, to these young athletes, you know, before fights, after fights. I think it's a it's a big plus. And we've made history together. And Ronda is always with me, no matter no matter even if I do most of the work. She she knows that she's with me and. You know, we're, we're together in this. Does she ever pop into the gym to train with the guys? She She's popped in before, yeah. She's popped into the gym, not training so much. She's so busy with um, all the her stuff she's doing. But she does she does pop in, and she said hello to Edmund, and we had some time together before this fight. Uh, last thing on Rhonda, I, I'm just curious. You know, like two weeks ago was the anniversary of the Holly Holm fight, and everyone talks about it, posts things. Do you see that stuff? And if so, how does that feel when you see that? You know, it feels like an eternity ago, but it was just four years ago. How, how do you react when you see that stuff pop up every year around this time? It, it's done what I think now. It's we're just uh, working on our new fighter, like I said, Ariel, on Edmund, and everything is in the past. And um, you live and you learn. And there has been many, many greats that have been defeated. Uh, life continues. She's living very happy. Everything is great. And we're going to have, uh, we have a kid that she worked with and she's helped. She's been hands on with that is going to uh, continue growing and is going to put smiles on her faces. It's a wonderful story. Now, um, he doesn't have his next fight yet, or does he maybe? Um, no, next fight is not um, lined up yet. Uh, I, I asked for a little bit time for him to develop a little bit his physical. Um, his strength is getting better uh, day by day. You know, he's a kid that uh, is going to be in his prime when he's in, like, not in his prime, but in his peak of his physical ability, like 23. So I need, like, another five, six months of him to develop and fight by fight, uh, day by day. His uh, performance is changing even in the in the gym. So I asked for just a little bit time before we take the next one. Of course, I've been offered uh, something already, but that's going to be between me uh, right now, because with the fight, I haven't made a decision to say yes. But with the fighters, anything they give me, I'm always going to say yes. It's just about the date, so I'm going to uh, have to decide that. Hopefully, we could get in on uh, what we want is uh, end of February or March. I just need a, just a little bit development time. Um, just he fought four times this year, you know, and it hasn't been easy, and he a few little injuries here and there. So we just want to make sure he's healthy and he's young, not to rush into anything. Yeah, and it's amazing because this time last year, he, you know, we saw Brad Tavares fight Israel Adesanya, same venue, Madison Square Garden. Now he's the champion. Is it possible that this time next year, we're talking about Edmund as maybe a title contender? Do you, do you feel like that's possible, or it would be a little too soon? Hundred percent possible. Like, uh, uh, honestly, if you want my honest opinion, yes. I've been. Uh, you know, humble about everything today that I'm telling you that we've been, we need develop, development time and everything. But if they say that we need to fight Israel uh, in March, I promise you I'm 100% confident on my fight. We're ready to go. He's wow. ready to go. That I could say. Wow. Okay. So now it's just if about... I, if, I haven't seen, if I haven't seen it at that level, but you guys that are at that level or, you know, I see that I'm going to have a difficulty, you know, from distance, inside fighting, middle distance, you know, wherever this fight goes, outside, he keeps it on the outside. We have to wrestle him. If I'm, if I'm not confident anywhere, I would say that. But I'm confident everywhere. Okay. What a fight that would be. That would be incredible. I well, hope uh, they're, I hope they're confident where they take the fight. You know, because wherever they take it, this kid's ready. That all promise. Okay. All right. We will remember that. Edmund, great to talk to you again. Congratulations on all your success with Edmund and the team. Uh, good to see you back, you know, in the limelight, doing great things in the sport of mixed martial arts in the UFC. And uh, we wish the best to you and Edmund. Looking forward to seeing what he does next. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. It's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.